Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community and neighborhoods. And now from four properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning and welcome to the talk show, All Things Moore County. And Dorothy, I have to tell you, I am really glad to hear your voice back on the intro. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. The other one was good, but it was too polished for me. It was just too, I don't know, professional. Not hometown enough? No, right, exactly. Okay. Um, two weeks from now, um, school starts. Um, uh, I know. And we've had, a, we've had a host of shows over the last um, couple of weeks um, talking about things like mentoring and mm-hmm. coaching, um, things to do with students, um, and, of course, in between uh, lots of shows on the arts. Do you remember the last time we did a show um, on real estate? Um, long time. Yeah, it has been a long time. Yeah, nine years ago, this was nothing but a show about real estate. And I I'm think glad we to put, change the format. I think we put everyone to sleep. <laughs> but, you know, 2018, in addition to how busy we've been with the shows, 2018 has been an exceptionally busy year in our residential real estate market and we talk all the time about the changing demographics Mm -hmm. the growth the many first-time buyers um, moving into Moore County um, it has become such a desired place to live for families with kids and and we do reference the demographics we haven't had a show on lending and we haven't had a show um, with um, another realtors perspective um, but it, it's time that we do. and Yeah, I think uh, we're well overdue for such a show. Yeah, because the market is, has not slowed down. And it, we've just gone through July. It was traditionally a slow month. It was frenetic. <laughs> I know. I've seen you come in, in here. Yeah, sweating <laughs> and complaining, not complaining. Wearing your running shoes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look, I have, two, I have two great guests with me. And um, I, I want to introduce um, Jen Carlson first, who is... Um, Uh, a fellow broker real estate broker she's the owner broker owner of pine life realty group she's been in the business for five years Uh, very professional very well respected completely hard working and you know how we always say we like people who are type a yeah yeah type a (laughs) and uh, she came in as a as a favor to to both me and to her friend and and main guest for the show karen dulmage um, who is with uh, First Mortgage, Residential Mortgage. And Karen has a reputation in Moore County as somebody who is also type A, who gets things done, who over-communicates. Um, I've had the privilege to be on a couple of opposite sides of transactions that she's handled as a lender. And um, with all the coaching that we do with first-time buyers, um, Jen, I think you would agree that one of our major jobs is to manage our clients' expectations and get them set up with the people that are tangential to a real estate transaction after you and I become the first point of contact. Absolutely. People we trust. Right. People that we know will meet our expectations and using vendors that we can hold accountable when they do fail so that our clients see that we really go to task for them. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, Karen, um, I made a couple of statements about 2018, about how frenetic the year has been Uh, from the lending side. Do you see it the same way? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's been busy, particularly in this area and I lend in a lot of different areas, but I've seen this area really pick up, um, over the last, I'd say about 12 to 24 months. Um, but yeah, and there's more changes coming down the pipe. Which we're going to talk yeah, about that today. About. What percentage of loans do, that you do in Moore County today are for first-time buyers? Um, I'd say a fair amount, probably thirty percent, thirty-five percent. And I thought it would be higher. Really? Yeah. Um, well, we have a lot of retirees here as well, so a lot of people coming from outside the area here. So. And what about um, from where you sit? Um, what about the breakdown of government loans versus conventional loans? 
So I'm a military, I'm a wife of a military serviceman, as is Jen. Mm -hmm. So we deal a lot with VA and the military, and we're really invested in that community. So certainly that's a lot of what we do. Um, FHA as well. It's kind of geared towards first-time home buyers, not necessarily specifically a first-time home buyer product, but we do a lot of um, VA and FHA financing. Yeah, and your passion for the business didn't just come when you you started the business. You come from a background a little bit. Yeah, I was of kind this. of bred. Tell me, <laughs> tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, my mother is a was a well known or well respected um, underwriting manager for many many years. She's now retired. Um, and growing up, I think I, I kind of swore I would never get into this business because I saw how hard she worked. Um, and she was a single mom, and she worked constantly. Right. But, um, but she also had a lot of joy in what she did, and she was well regarded in what she did. And actually, I think that's what most appealed to me um, growing up is I found it was an industry where, where women could really excel and were um, in charge of a lot of different departments. Um, they were run by women. And in the 80s and early 90s, that wasn't necessarily the norm. Yeah. So um, that kind of appealed to me. Okay. And although I swore I would never get into this business, that is what, in fact, I have a passion for. Jen, how did, um, how did you and Karen hook up? Um, tell me a little bit about your relationship. I met <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm trying to remember. So I originally got into real estate and started with Pinnock Real Estate. So okay. I worked for Lucretia right. and Karen was one of her preferred vendors. Great lady. Mm -hmm. So I used her um, actually to purchase my home as well. And once we worked together maybe two times, then she became my main lender. Right. So the things that I look for, yep. accountability. Yep. Uh, if Karen's not available, her team will take charge. They'll answer the phone. It could be 9 o'clock at night. I'm writing an offer. I need a pre-approval updated. Somebody will get it to me. Uh, we close on time, which is extremely important. Most of my clients are military and they're special, you know, some sort of special forces branch. So they, timing is of the essence. They're always gone. So when they're here, they need to close on time. They get their loans closed quickly. They've closed a loan, a VA loan for me in three weeks, which I think might be a record. Wow. Yes. So, and after establishing that relationship with her and seeing that my clients can call her late at night, that we, we work weekends, so she works weekends, I just thought, you know, this makes sense. This makes sense for the lifestyle of majority of my clients. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to be able to get somebody on the phone. Yep. They don't always have access to email. Right. And time is of the essence, right? And so far, so good. <laughs> so basically, <clears throat> you've um, you've cultivated a relationship, and she is Karen is is one of your partners. It's what you bring to the table for your client. Absolutely. Right. So, um, I try not to steer. So mm -hmm. I always give them two choices, mm -hmm. but I do let them know that Karen is my number one pick. Mm -hmm. I've used her for multiple home loans and refinances on my own properties. Mm -hmm. And that we have a lot of accountability if they go with her. She's local. They can go into her office and meet with her and her team. We can use their conference center. Um, so all of these things are very important. And that's kind of why we've built a partnership. Yeah. I would say 90% of my one. Yeah. Maybe one out of 10 doesn't use Karen. They use a family friend lender. Right. But 90% do. Um, let's talk about that. Um, it's frustrating sometimes when you're working with a, a buyer <clears throat> who's coming into town and you want them to work with a local lender, mm -hmm. um, but they happen to have a cousin or an aunt or or they happen to have an 800 number in Montana <laughs> that has a great, like, you know, bait and switch type rate. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, Karen, how do you deal with that? Because that happens all the time. Yeah, um, well, it starts with kind of coaching my agents that I work with, and it's really more I'm supposed to be a resource for them and for their clients. And so I don't mind being a second opinion. Right. I don't mind you picking my brain. I don't mind you running scenarios past me because um, reality is typically when I get to talk with a client, the information that I give them and um, breaking it down, and, and I think they know right away that I'm going to be someone that's going to carry them through the process from start to finish. And typically that conversation ends sort of like, 
wow, this is so much more information than I got from the last guy. Mm-hmm. So again, it's, and I'm not a high pressure salesperson at all. I am, in fact, I kind of don't you, know how you I don't even, up in sales. You don't even have to say that. I can <laughs> tell just by your demeanor and yeah, and yeah your cadence. Yes. So I, I think they pick up on that too. And so they understand that I'm really just there to be a resource. And typically that's what wins over my client's what about what business. about the client that comes to you who's already shopped mm-hmm. somewhere else, not locally, um, and they'd say, "Well, I have this from this lender or that," but the more you speak to them, they really don't have anything. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and absolutely, you wind up having to educate them. Um, Correct. And education is key. I mean, I'm really big on hand-holding, and I think that's why first-time homebuyers, I kind of uh-huh. gravitate towards them because I just really enjoy that education piece. But, um, yeah, you know, finding a rate on the Internet and saying this mm-hmm. is the box that I fit into, that's not necessarily what you're getting. It's not one-size-fits-all. Right. Um, you can't talk to the guy around the water cooler and expect to get the exact same program as him. Right. Jen, how many times have you had a client in the car and you're driving, showing them property, right? And they say, so what are the rates today? Um, what, what do you say to that? How, okay. I know what I say, but I'd love to hear what you say. This is me verbatim. I'm not a lender. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to give you a number. Right. It's <laughs> well, not a lender question. It's right. not a realtor question. And I'll be honest. Bill, ever since I started real estate, Uh I've never put anybody in my car who is not pre-approved. Right. Smart. Yeah, very smart. 100% of the time. My best friend looked at me and said, why do I have to get a Mm pre-approval? We already know our credit score. Right. It doesn't matter. It's a professional standard. This is a career path. You're very smart to do that. Yes. Um, So here's a question, Um, Karen. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between a pre-qualification letter and a pre-approval letter. Well, so all I do is a pre-approval letter. Okay. Um, and what that means is I'm having an initial conf- uh, consultation with the client. Right. We're really an advice-based business. So it's not just about a mortgage. It's about what are your goals? What do you see happening in the next five, 10 years? Are you going to add to your family? Do you have aging parents? You know, What's going to be happening in your life um, between the time period you're going to own this home. Right. And so it starts with a consultation. Um, and then typically it, it moves to making application, which it doesn't cost anything to apply. It doesn't obligate them to work with me. So it, it's, it's kind of a no brainer next step. Um, typically that's done online, secured website. They can do it at their leisure. And when that comes in, um, myself or a member of my team kind of combs through the file, determines what is needed. And, and generally speaking, we can make a, an, a pre-approval decision um, depending on the client's profile. But if they're, you know, your standard W-2 employee with money in the bank and great credit, it's usually pretty typical um, mm-hmm. pre-approval. But what we do is we issue that pre-approval, a more generic pre-approval. Mm-hmm. We issue the estimate and we issue a needs list. And that needs list is everything that I need to underwrite pretty much that file. And so, and we stay on top of them until those documents come in because I I had a client in my office last night say, well, is it necessary that you have my bank statements now? We're not going to buy for four or five months. And I said, yeah, it's necessary. I need to see your pattern of spending. What's coming into the bank account? What's Mm -hmm. going out? Because those are patterns we have time to correct or to document. So. And um, is the term pre-qualification just a term that shouldn't be used probably Mm -hmm. i mean i've i've seen pre-qualifications done where a credit score hasn't even been checked and it's it's not worth the paper it's written on jen could you imagine in this day and age presenting an offer um if you're the listing agent as representing the seller you get an offer don't you want that um pre-approval letter attached to the offer absolutely and if it's if it's not well, what do you, what do you, if it's not, what do you tell your seller? Okay. <laughs> I talked to the agent first on the other side and I asked them, has the, has the buyer been pre-approved? If they say no, uh, right. I let out a terrible sigh. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> um, I tell all of my sellers that 
I do not want to sway their opinion, but my, my role is to advise them. Real estate agents hold a very high power. We are there for advisors. And if my seller has a hot property or even a property that's sitting on the market for six months, timing is everything. Right. If you get an offer and there's no pre, pre-approval letter attached, the buyer has not even made the effort right. to talk to a lender. Right. How serious are they about buying? Right. And I usually guide them in that manner. Right. So then once they kind of weigh the pros and cons, the seller will ask, I will not consider the offer without the pre-approval letter. It becomes part of the counter. Mm-hmm. It is. Right? Yes. Yeah. I, I could not agree with you more. Um, uh, there's so many things. Um, one of the, one of the um, most important uh, features of a good lender is the way they take an application and interview mm-hmm. right up front, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What, what happens if it's not done properly? things can fall apart yeah yeah i mean it's finances are nuanced and it requires a conversation i mean you really you really need to know oh i don't just have forty thousand dollars sitting in my bank account is that money seasoned is it how long has it been there right where did it come from if you just deposited it right so yeah i mean you have to dig deeper to understand yeah and if I could add one thing, you know, I lend in many different markets. And one thing I haven't noticed here, and I'm surprised, is listing agents don't call me on my pre-approval letter. Listing agents don't call you? No, not okay. in this market. But in many other markets, my phone rings all weekend long. I got your pre-approval letter attached to this buyer. Tell me about them. And I Interesting. And I talk with them about what it is I've received from the client, how prompt they've been, how on top of things they are. It's an indication of, as you said, Jen, how they're going to be throughout the process. Are they going to stay on top of their inspections? Are they going to meet their contingency dates? Things like that. Yeah. Um, There's a lot to the process. And if you, if it's almost like a confessional when, (laughs) when tell me everything, right? Yeah. Tell me everything. You're like the high priestess and, um, (laughs) They have to come in and tell you the truth because if they don't tell you the truth today, it's going to set things back. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jen, I'm sure you advise your clients the same thing. When you go in, you need to set this up properly, s- establish a good foundation mm-hmm. so we have no surprises or hiccups down the road. She uh, laughs at everything I say. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm laughing. It's funny. resonating. I'm thinking of stories. So Jane is one of the underwriters uh, with Karen's team. And my clients hate Jane. They love Jane. <laughs> She's a bad but they cop. they hate yes, Jane. Yes. She's the bad cop. So yeah. I tell them in the beginning, this is speaking from experience. I'm sitting I'm sitting at the hospital, my husband's military, and we're, we're up in Washington, D.C., and we're buying a house. Right. And Karen is doing all the lending, and the phone would ring, and it would be Jane. So my husband would say, if Jane calls me one more time for a document, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to drive there yeah. and I'm going to scream at her. Did you tell your husband that the loan process is invasive and you yeah. just bite your tongue and get used to yeah. it? Yes. She's my pit bull. Yes. And she will stay on top of you every yes. day until you get her what she needs. We're going to come We're going to come back in the second set. Um, we're speaking with uh, Karen Dolmage from First Mortgage. We're going to talk a little bit more about your company, mm-hmm. what you offer in the second set. Um, and I'm also being joined by a friend, uh, Jennifer Carlson from Pine Life Realty Group. Um, this is all things more county. Welcome back to um, our second set of all things Moore County. Um, We're talking about um, lenders. We're talking about loans. We're talking about our very brisk real estate market. Um, Karen Dolmage is our featured guest um, from First Mortgage. Uh, Karen, I I was watching a a sporting event on TV the other day. Mm Mm-hmm. 
And um, it was a weekend, and I didn't think much of it. And then I saw this ridiculous mortgage commercial with these guys with jets on their feet, calculators <laughs> in their hand, wings <laughs> on their shoulders. Boom, boom, boom. It says, apply for a mortgage. Be pre-qualified in 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's invasive. The social media has so much misinformation out there, mm-hmm. but people get swayed by it. How do you handle that yeah um, social media um, the media and the internet have a lot of influence and on consumers and it's it's kind of unfortunate in this particular instance because I'm really starting to see that's in fact the biggest shift I'm seeing in years to come is the tech disruption and really what it is is companies like the commercial you're referring to right saying push of a button get a mortgage right. well it's not that simple and it's not intended to be that reminds simple. me of 2007 and 2008 yeah, dangerous very right? dangerous dangerous territory so it, yeah it's not meant to be that simple kind of to add to what i was speaking about before is we want to know what's what their goals are we want to know um what their finances are because that's going to help us better advise them as to which programs and products are going to make the most sense it's not just a mortgage it's a financial decision right so i think it's dangerous it's definitely coming down the pike i completely disagree with that approach right um and and really it's going to require all of us to get better it sets unrealistic expectations to um, unfortunately, w- what I refer to as entitled mm-hmm. buyers mm-hmm. are people that think the world owes them a favor, which is unfortunate because it's it seems more apparent to me today than it did ten or twenty years ago. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, it, I mean, it really is is just devaluing what it is we offer, as, right. not only as lenders but realtors too. You know, there right. are websites out there. There's a couple companies that come to mind that um, say you don't need a realtor. Right. You don't need someone. Why pay? Why pay commissions? We, mm-hmm. you can do it here for a flat fee. Well, you're going to get a lot less when it comes to that. Um, mm-hmm. I just don't think it's doing them any favors at all. Right. Um, I believe in technology for the ease of the transaction. Naturally, we use technology for a lot of what we do, but I certainly I want to talk to my clients. It yeah. should not replace me. It should it should add and be a value add. Right. Um, so we have people that are so well informed from the internet that they come in and they're not maybe not as coachable as yeah. you would like them to be. You yeah. have to kind of like retrain them. Absolutely. Yeah. We have to, yeah, break it down. That um, um, and, and that's really not what they want. And when you explain it to them like that, it, it, it makes sense. I mean, this is the biggest debt of their entire life. And I am responsible for helping right. them manage that debt until it's paid off. Right. So an online lender or an app is not going to do that. Right. They're not going to do what I do. Uh-huh. And uh, somebody can go online and apply, and sometimes there's a dissonance, there's a disconnect before you get to closing. Oh, my gosh, the rate is not what we had locked into. What happened? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it's a bait and switch, but when you work one-on-one, Jen, don't you find with a local uh, person like Karen... The, the rate is the rate. The interest mm-hmm. lock is the interest lock, right? Absolutely. Yeah. What do you, um, there's so many questions. Um, sometimes interest rate locks cause a little bit of agita for some people with delayed closings. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you set that up for them? Do you work on s- automatically 60 day? And I really want to ask a lot about your company. Sure. Some of the programs you offer. Um, when you lock someone into a rate, they understand that that is for a specific term. Mm-hmm. Correct. And, and if they don't close by that uh, date, what happens? So it depends. It's going to be my famous answer. That's a it great depends. Best answer in our business. Yeah, it um, and it does. But I mean, as general test, typically, especially when it's it's no fault of the clients, if it's a seller issue or inspection issue or something like that. Um, typically, I'm covering the cost, especially if we're only talking a few days or a week. Um, I don't mind doing that. That's just, again, a value add to what we do. Um, But when there's an extensive delay, that's when we start talking and educating the the homeowner. Does it make sense to pay to extend this costly lock? We have one coming up. We have one right now. Seller delay things. Seller delay. His lock expires this Friday. And so I'm going to Seller delay. Yeah. Yeah, so the seller has to find a new house. They have pets. They're buying another house out of state, but they need to rent temporarily. So... 
they haven't found anything, delays my buyer. My buyer luckily is locked into his apartment, so he has a little bit more time, but the rate extension, there is none because it ended on the 15th, or today's the 15th of August, and now we're not closing until probably August 31st or maybe even first week September. And we were going to extend, but that cost was going to be 1200 mm-hmm. So Karen and her team evaluated it. They're going to let it expire today, mm-hmm. and we're going to write it out and see if we can't get the same interest rate at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. and do redo and, and if you can't well relocking so i won't wait till the end of the month but what i do need to do is firm up what that new closing date's going to be because our relock period is a 15-day period it's a lot more cost effective than trying to extend and when the market is the same there's no reason to extend so that's you know it, it again it depends it may make sense to let a rate expire and it, oftentimes it does in a stable market um, in a rising interest rate envir- environment, not so much. You know, you are looking at costly extensions at times. The question that I posed to Jen before when she was driving around with a client in the car and they were asking her, so what are the rates today? Mm-hmm. Um, w- how do you handle that question? Because there's so many answers. There's not one It depends. <laughs> it depends. You can have any rate you want. Right. You just have to pay for it. But typically, um, I talk with the client about what average interest rates are looking like, what they can do to improve their interest rate. Um, and, you know, certain programs are going to afford certain interest rates. If a client has no down payment and they're not a military veteran, um, you know, then these are going to be the rates for those sorts of programs. But we certainly talk about the pros and cons of all of that. Um, you know, if they have access to funds, whether or not it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. 20% is not always the best answer. Right. I mean, did you know you can actually, at times, get a better interest rate with a 5% down payment than you can a 10%? Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I did not know that. Because there are certain programs that are going to benefit the mortgage insurance premiums. It, okay, so if that's the case, <clears throat> in that situation where the rate is better with less down, mm-hmm. are the closing costs higher? No. Okay. Well, I suppose I should re- reframe. Title insurance might be based on loan amounts. So in that sense, you might pay yeah. slightly more title insurance. But no, the, the actual costs themselves are not increasing simply because you elect to make a, a lesser down payment. Okay. If someone comes to you and they want to apply for a loan, are you a bank? Are you a T- tell me about First Mortgage. Tell me. We are not a bank. Okay. We are a uh, correspondent, private, direct correspondent lender. So it is our money we are lending. Um, we close in our name. It's our name on the deed of trust. But we only do residential mortgages. So we're not a bank. We don't do checking accounts. I'm not going to sell you credit cards. Um, I mean, this is what we live and breathe is residential mortgages. Okay. And uh, you have your own underwriting department? We do. Tell me why that's important to, Hugely a, to, a, important. to a buyer. Yeah. So we have in-house underwriting, processing, closing, and we know our underwriters. We know exactly what they're going to request on any given loan. We, we can help paint the picture because we know we can set expectations because we know what's going to be required versus, you know, a broker maybe or even a big bank where their underwriting department might be clear on the other side of the country and they don't know these underwriters. They have no idea how they're going to view a file. Um, <clears throat> so it just gives us a lot more control mm-hmm. and um, an ease to the transaction. And more expedient. Absolutely. The process is more expedient. Yeah, much more streamlined. Jen, you said you had a... Um a client that was a VA that they closed in three weeks. Yes. T- uh, typically, um, when you're working with Karen, um, do you work on a four to five to six week um, close from the time of, of a ratified contract? Average would be about four weeks. Okay. But that's not due to any lack in their system. It's more of client preference, mm-hmm. and they usually would like a four week closing. Okay. Huh. Um, multiple offer situations, which have become prevalent in our county, we right. try to close in three three weeks mm-hmm. because we want the seller to pick us. Right, exactly. Um, one of the things um, with, with all the new buyers we have, uh, one of the questions I get, Jen, a lot is, so we've written a contract, we've gotten acceptance. Buyer says to me, okay, what do we do now? My answer is, I will take care of the inspections, the process. I only want you to do what 
whatever the lender wants for the next 10 days. This is not a democracy. <laughs> Just if they ask you to jump off the roof of my building, <laughs> ask them what color shoes you should wear when you, you do so. Yes. Right? Yes. Why? Why is that so important to just do whatever the lender says? Honestly? Yeah. Well, A, because real estate agents have no control over their client's financial information. Mm-hmm. Correct. I, I typically stay out of that piece. Right. When they have the pre-approval, I give them an outline of what the loan process is, but I take the wheel, do all the inspections, everything's negotiated, and I tell them it is most important for you to do your financial piece right. because you are the one that can dictate closing your loan on time. Right. If you do not turn in your information, then you may not get this house. Mm-hmm. You know, there's only a, a, a 14 day grace period for a contract. So if you have a buyer who decides not to follow the financial instructions of the lender mm-hmm. and doesn't turn in the paperwork right. and misses closing right. and the sellers decide, you know what, we have a better offer on backup. We're, we're not going to give you, we're not going to sign off on an extension. They could jeopardize losing their home that they want. Mm-hmm. So I put it, and it's kind of scary, but I put it tough up front, do what she needs, get her what she needs, don't make me call you. Right. So, Karen, <laughs> I'm going to just make you a friendly little bet. Okay. That when Jen Carlson brings you um, a buyer and that buyer sits down with you, that buyer is prepped. Absolutely. Marinated and ready to go. Yeah. I was actually about to jump in and say that's clearly the case too because right. I don't have trouble with Jen's clients. It's a sign of a good broker. <laughs> yeah, she does. She sets it up and it's it's a warm handoff. She's already prepared them. Yeah, a warm handoff is yeah. a good way to put it. Um, but she's standing in the wings waiting to come back in and be the enforcer if it doesn't go the way it's supposed to. And there's been very few occasions where I've had to say, Jen, help me get yeah. your client back on track. But she takes yeah. the reins from yeah. the beginning, yeah, she which owns I it. think is why we work so well together. That's what a good broker does. They Absolutely. own the situation. We're going to come back in the third set. This is All Things More County. We're talking with Karen Dulmage of First Mortgage and Jen Carlson of Pine Life Realty, all about the uh, the lending landscape. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about some programs mm-hmm. in the next set and um, talk about some of your success stories and some of the learning experiences that we've all had. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our uh, final set of All Things More County. Um, this entire show has been dedicated to the uh, the loan process, and Karen Dulmage from First Home Mortgage is our guest, and uh, I stand corrected. Um, I don't think I have been saying the name right. Shame <laughs> on me, but First Home Mortgage. Yes. And um, I, while we're doing that, um, why not give me um, your website address, um, some contact information so we can get that out there. Sure, yeah. My web address is www.thedolmageteam.com. Okay. Dolmage, my last name, D-U-L-M-A-G-E. You can also find me at firsthome.com. Um, and my cell phone number, which is usually connected to my hip, is 703-626-9007. Right. One more time, 703-626-9007. Perfect. Um, so if somebody goes onto your website, mm-hmm. uh, they've just spent a couple hours with Jen. Mm-hmm. She's made that uh, initial contact and they go on your website. What are they going to find? Um, a lot of information. So certainly information about the company, about my team, um, about past clients. We have lots of testimonials online. There's also information about various programs on there. And then the application, which is where they get started, a secured application. Okay. Um, let's talk about some of the programs sure. in, our, in our market. The VA loan is so seems to be so prevalent, Jen. Oh, absolutely. W- w- this year alone, what percentage of your of your clients have been using a, a VA or government loan? 
ninety percent of my yeah. clients use a VA loan. <laughs> and I know that ninety percent of those clients. How many of them do a hundred percent financing? All of them. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. They save their cash for repairs, rainy day, vacation, what have you. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, that takes me back to 2007 and 2008 where there's there's so much. I call it um, buying a house with no skin in the game. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, how do you coach your, your clients on that? Um, I'm just. Okay. So I am against the grain when it comes to this. Okay. I believe that you save your cash. Cash is leverage. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you can get a loan at 100% and okay. not put a penny down and okay. have the seller pay closing cost, pay for inspections and what have you that could be negotiated, I say go for it. Okay. And I'm a total different thinker in this method because cash, when you walk into anywhere, I've walked into stores and made a cash purchase and negotiated a price on a refrigerator from 2200 down to 1600 And 2200 was already the sale price because I paid cash. I got a roof put on my house that was a $18,000 roof, a 10 roof, for $14,000 because I paid cash. Uh-huh. So in this industry, in this market, if something does happen again and the economy slumps, mm-hmm. it's better to have cash because if you're getting a VA loan with a low interest rate, you can finance 100% and your closing costs are paid, why not save your cash? Why? So, so I'm, I'll play devil's advocate. <laughs> play uh, devil's advocate. Because I have, uh, we, you know, we, there are different philosophies. So so many of the people who are buying homes are here for three or four years. Mm-hmm. They call you up down the road and say, hey, Jen, we're getting transferred. We've got to move. And now the closing costs, mm-hmm. the VA funding fee, mm-hmm. all of those things are now, they have to come due when you sell the home. Absolutely. You do a market analysis, and and most of these younger buyers are not buying their forever home, right? Correct. So what happens when they think that their cost basis includes their closing costs mm-hmm. and their VA funding fee, and it doesn't? No. So how do, you, how do you handle that? Okay. I worry. I mean, I worry for some of these kids. So I've only had this happen twice. Okay. Um, I have listed two homes yep. uh, with people I met who had purchased a home three years ago, okay. and it was new construction. Okay. They couldn't compete with the con- with the builder, with the programs they were offering now. As right. far as the builders offering upgrades, uh, four thousand in closing costs, X Y Z. Right. So my sellers, they did have to bring some cash to the table. They had to bring like fifty seven hundred dollars. Right. Um, but. They financed 100%. They've had a low interest rate, a low payment. Worst case scenario, if they had to rent, their payment was already low because their interest rate was mm-hmm. 3.5. Okay. And they didn't have a problem bring, coming up with the 5,700. Okay. So it's an, it, it would be Karen's answer. It depends. Yeah, it depends. Right? It but depends. For me, I'll just give you an example. I roll over homes. Mm-hmm. So cash is king for me. Right. If I can finance a home at 100%. Right. And leave my cash for leverage. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, but, but you're ahead of but you're ahead of the curve in terms of market knowledge, mm-hmm. your resources, right, and your per, your purpose, right. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, for most of my buyers, I will actually say I sell more resale than I do new construction. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, most of my resale mm-hmm. homes, we look at value. I cannot dictate what's going to happen in the next five years. But it's the same thing. When Karen asks them their goals, I ask them their goals. Right. So if I know they're only going to be here for three years, they're not buying a three hundred fifty thousand dollar house. That's they're right. buying a hundred and seventy five thousand dollar house. Right. And then we try to get some of the VA funding fee paid by what's left over on the closing costs credit mm-hmm. we got from the sellers. Mm-hmm. So there are different ways you can manipulate that transaction to where, as long as you know what your buyer's end game is, mm-hmm. you can still protect them. And still yeah. give them a yeah. lot of options. Yeah, there are a lot of there are a lot of nuances in our market, and we have to just have our radar out there all the time. Um, is there a situation, Karen, where you sit down with the VA purchaser? Is there any? If is there ever another loan besides a VA loan that would be 
good for them? Yeah, um, and certainly 10 years ago, absolutely. I didn't do any VA loans 10 years ago because it was a different shift in the market. There was too many <clears throat> prob- attractive at the time is what we called them. Today, we probably call them dangerous loan options back then that had really low enticing interest rates, interest-only terms. The LIBOR. You know. yeah, yeah, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Negam loans, which we didn't do a lot of those, you know, but <clears throat> at the time, they weren't maybe as a- as attractive. Today... Generally speaking, the VA loan, if they have a choice, is going to be the option they want to go, even with the funding fee. Best and that's interest because rate. Best interest rate and no fees. I mean, we charge zero lender fees at all on a VA loan. There's certain inspections that have to be done, paid by a seller. There's certain fees attorneys can't charge. Um, in some areas of the country, real estate agents have fees, administrative fees. They can't charge those on VA loans. So it really is... Um, typically a better scenario and then the only times when we do talk about down payment maybe being beneficial is when um, they're trying to reduce that funding fee right. and that's a conversation we have too about whether or not it makes sense to apply some of this money or as jen says i mean a lot of her buyers are doing some sweat equity these are handy people that are looking to buy properties low right put money into them and they won't be in those situations you're describing in three years when they PCS. That's right. So in those cases, yeah, it does make sense to do the no money down and put their money in, invested into the home. Right. Um, but there are, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> there I, are I, always, I always say if you're going to do 100% financing, make sure you're buying a home that you can buy price below the market. Mm-hmm. If, yes. you, if you buy it above value, then you're hoping that the market will... Worst case scenario, stay flat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or go up a little, but not to not to drop. Right. Um, That's why it, you hire a fierce negotiator. Yeah. Like this lady right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And just a, a personal experience I had. Yep. Okay, so we bought another house. We, we have several, which we're selling, if anybody wants to buy them. <laughs> um, we bought another house almost two years ago, and all of our VA was tied up. So Karen find me a fi- she found me a 5% down loan. I put like 20 something thousand dollars down, which was cash, Mm -hmm. which is out of the money that I can use for leverage. Right. And I thought by going with that program that I would be able to claim that on my taxes because I put so much down. When in reality, when I met with an accountant, you, your cash down. So if you put $25,000 down, you don't get to deduct that as a loss of income or really as any kind of write off. So. Sometimes when I'm t- I'm talking to my buyers, I give them that experience. Mm-hmm. I could do a lot more with that twenty five thousand dollars <throat> than just a little bit extra in my payment. Mm-hmm. There's nothing better than intelligent leverage. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're in a position where you can maximize it. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I, I would I would venture to say that some of the buyers who are coming here for three or four years are not in that position. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to have a philosophical conversation. <laughs> we're in the same circle, but on different points of it. Yeah, um, we are. It's okay. Um, no, I know what you're doing, and, and I would I agree with you. It it sounds, at your age especially, mm-hmm. intelligent leverage and good credit, there's mm-hmm. nothing better. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and you're, you're doing it right. Um, in addition to VA loans, you also do USDA loans, yes. FHA loans. Yes. Um, for people who just think they're fancy initials, can you give us a little bit of a uh, background and who would be the people qualified or interested in those type of loans? Absolutely. Um, FHA, we don't do quite as much in this area. The loan limits are low. It's the Federal Housing Administration, so it's HUD mm-hmm. is who it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of designed for a first-time home buyer, but not. You don't have to be a first-time home buyer to use the program. It's a lot more flexible. So when we have someone with marginal credit or, um, you know, maybe a little bit sketchy employment history, things like that, it may be a program that shines for them. Um, generally speaking, it's it's not um, it's not one I would recommend with, you know, my 800 credit score buyer who has down payment. But again, that's why we look at their financials and kind of guide them to which programs are going to be beneficial. Right. Um, USDA, de- it's Department of Agriculture. It's the same ones that grade your meat. Um, it's it's a federal program. So, um, and that is is going to be geographical, geographical specific. So the property has to meet their 
requirements, but it's a great program, 100% down, low mortgage insurance premiums. In fact, they just reduced them a couple years ago. This year, they raised the income limits for USDA, so it, it's just opened it up to a lot more young families. Okay, another question. The advantages to doing a USDA or VA loan versus a conventional loan? Um, it depends. It depends. <laughs> She's got it. You got it covered. <laughs> it's true. Um, it depends on their goals. It depends on how much cash they have access to. Um, it depends on that monthly payment. I mean, there are times when I have a client that says, this is the monthly payment. I'm mm-hmm. not going to exceed this monthly payment. And that's typically actually the first question I ask a client because chances are you're going to qualify for more than you're comfortable spending. Right. So we kind of back into, okay, this is the payment. This is how much cash we have to work with. These are the ones that make sense. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a very cool and calm demeanor, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's got to be a very good when you're speaking with uh, anxious clients. Uh, I hope so. K- Karen, one of the other things that you... Um, you take pride in is um, your association with your realtor partners Mm -hmm. and your desire to educate them and teach them as you go so that you all become like one extension of of each other. Yes. Yeah, I believe in the team aspect. I just think it lends to a much smoother transaction, a more enjoyable experience for the client. Um, when I have my trusted real estate partners, just such as Jen, mm-hmm. um, attorneys, um, the client knows that we have their back and that we're going to just take it from A to Z. And most times they end up coming out of it saying that was so easy. Thank you guys so much. And they're so grateful because they've heard horror stories. Um, so the CFPB may disagree with my thoughts on that, but I just believe a team is, is there's a huge value add. Um, no, everyone knowing the role that they play in a transaction. Mm-hmm. Um, we also try to partner with our real estate agents as far as educating, or we're really big on education. So we have a um, appraiser coming in next week, uh-huh. a local appraiser who's going to be doing basically two hours of Q and A with uh-huh. our agents. Uh-huh. I think it's just a really great opportunity to right. pick their brain. Um, we have a personality selling course we're going to be doing next month, where we're going to be coaching realtors on how to effectively identify and market to different types of personalities. What makes, in your opinion, what make, we're running short on time, this is important. In your opinion, what makes a good realtor? Uh, um, with you. Really, one that doesn't shy away from anything, a problem solver, someone who's willing to step up and just get the job done because there's going to be surprises in every single transaction. No right. two are alike. Right. Okay. Um, and follow through, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to um, c- come back um, maybe later this year, Jen, um, and have you come on. Um, we, you want to do a show all about radon, mm-hmm. and you have someone else you want to bring on to the show? I do. I would love to bring our state coordinator for radon. His name is Phil Gibson. And uh, many don't realize, but the EPA actually funds 100% of our radon research right now. Okay. And that would be something we would like to tape with you. Uh, that would take up, that would be a whole topic uh, oh, yes. for a show. I can bore you to death for 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> you, it's not boring at all, but we're going to definitely have you come back and do that. And thanks for coming in and joining us today. Karen, um, it was a pleasure to um, sit and listen to you. Thank you. Love Thank your you demeanor. You you have that. Um, there's a peacefulness about you, and how you can be peaceful and be a lender <laughs> is beyond <laughs> me, because it's a very stressful. Um, it is business, but it's a challenge that I enjoy. I mean, it's it's like I said, no two days are alike, and that's. That's exciting for me. One more time, um, website or your contact number. www.thedolmageteam.com. Dolmage is spelled D-U-L-M-A-G-E. And cell phone is 703-626-9007. Thank you. Thank you both for coming in. And um, Thank you for having us. We, uh, we're fortunate to have um, um, good local lenders in our area. And Karen, it, it's a pleasure to be able to meet you and sit here and listen uh, with you. Um, You're right there on the top of that list. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Everybody, have a great week. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Karen.